<sighs> if you say my name right. Ah, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Asley. There you go. <laughs> I am so excited and uh, grateful. And there's another word that wants to come through. <laughs> In anticipation, I okay. think, of this conversation, we've um, the universe has brought us together in a very divine way. Yeah. We have a mutual friend, yeah. my dear friend Janice, yeah. and it was fascinating because I had she knew of my plans to really put myself out there on the journey and uh, that I wanted to meet people. And she said, oh, my friend Jonathan has this event. Maybe you should go check it out. Mm. Perfect timing, perfect yeah. timing. So when I went and I met you and... People love you. I kind of scoped you out a little bit. By the way, for your audience, really quickly, I had a singles mixer. Singles so, mixer. Yeah, yeah. I just the want everyone mixer. to know, Thank like you. when they said that. Thank so. you, singles mixer. And <clears throat> I, we've had this conversation. Totally kindred spirits. Yeah. I so appreciate all the wisdom you shared. Your open heart, uh, the personality you bring to um, this midlife dating thing. Yeah. And um, I am, I am super excited for us to dive deep into. Some of my stuff have here. Some oh, we're going to work wisdom. on your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid. I'm a little afraid about this. I'm a little afraid about this. So, um, okay. But before we start, I actually have a question I've never asked you before. Okay. So I know you're on the journey as I am, right? Yeah. To find that partner. Um, I know self-love is a big part of your journey. Like, how do you keep yourself fueled and um in this place of faith or trust or knowing yeah. that there there is somebody there for you um that will come in at some point that's an interesting question because part of what i do as a dating and relationship coach i teach something a manifestation exercise which is kind of your mission statement your affirmation your mantra if you will and so mine happens to be two pages long. And so and it's it's written in the in the context of not, you know, the qualities and listing them out. It's okay. really telling a story. Mm. So I I I kind of think of along the lines of like the following. There's hope, there's belief, and then there's knowing. Mm. Like and below hope is like, you know, disbelief. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Or like, you know, so first we get to a level of hope. Like, I hope I find them. I hope I find them. I hope like that little engine that would, you know, <laughs> I, I hope I can. I hope I can. I hope I can kind of thing. Belief is that next rung of the ladder is mm. saying, okay, well, I will go from hope. I'm going to go to belief. Mm. And, and in that space of belief, I actually create a daydream for myself of kind of visualizing how it'll look. Now, I don't do it from the perspective it's supposed to happen just like this. Okay. It's to lean into the feeling of what it's like when you connect with that person where there, there's comfort and ease and, and tranquility and, you know, um, God, there's so many different words I can think of, you know, reciprocity and mm. compassion and care and generosity and all these things like lean into the feelings okay okay which is very it's abraham huge. if you yes. will you know like think about the feelings the next rung of the ladder is knowing like when you can, well at least for me when okay. i hold a space i know it's going to happen mm. and if i can let go of the attachment of when it's going to happen mm -hmm. and just it's kind of like build it they will come kind of thing yeah i've been building the field <laughs> like in field of dreams yes. you know i put the the mounds and the plates and the you I know the, you know so I put all the pieces in place. Okay. So then how do I hold that? Like, in other words, I can get discouraged. Mm -hmm. You know, swiping on the apps can be discouraging. You know, talking to someone and have it not go anywhere can be discouraging. I look at them all the pieces as a puzzle. Okay. Like, I look at them as, as just part of the stepping stones yeah. rather than look at it from a place of discouragement, frustration. And I mean, I'm not... I, I want to honor that I do feel those things, okay. but I immediately turn to gratitude. Mm. Like I'm like, I feel as though gratitude is that real shift because gratitude to me is the essence of love. Mm. Like, I mean, totally. there's lots of words, compassion yeah. and everything. But to me, when you're in a state of gratitude, that's yeah. the closest feeling to me when you're with somebody romantically, mm -hmm. like you love them, but not but and <laughs> I, i'm trying to remove but yeah, from my language you know thing. i catch I myself and 
when I'm in a state of appreciation, it kind of accelerates the love, mm. you know, and being in the, the compassion and generosity and those things. So kind of to put a bow on this feeling. And I'm okay if it doesn't happen. Mm. You know, okay. like I'm okay. Yeah. I, and by the way, I say this because as a coach, you know, I've been so driven into believing you have to find the one kind of thing. And I've adopted that. Okay. And I also recognize that living a full life doesn't have to be with a partner. It's great to have it. Yeah. But I don't need it from a place of desperation mm -hmm. anymore. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's the real mm -hmm. part of the journey. Yeah, it is. is you know, like, it I, is. It's that pin. I think you talk about yeah. in your book. I think that pin that kind of puts it in perspective. So. Yeah. If I'm hearing you then, well, let me ask this. Mm -hmm. You said the knowing, and I love how you did the latter. And I, yeah. I see that for myself as yeah. well. If you close your eyes and you're, you tap in, can you, do you have that knowing kind of as an overall um, energy around your partner? Or are you still building to the knowing? God, that's a great question. So I would say I'm building to the know. It's kind of like, I, and by the way, if I reference Abraham, I'm referencing Abraham Hicks. And, you know, there's a, something that she, I'm a fan. Esther would say, I'm getting ready to get ready to get ready to get ready to get ready. So is it, is it, is the knowing still a work in process? Mm. See, this is where our humanness comes in because yeah. we want evidence. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, if I had the partner that I can go back and say, look, this is what I did. Yeah. You know, but when you're in this space, it's really, this is where faith comes in. Mm. It's like trust and faith is like such, it's a, it's, it's a powerful force and it feels so like, it's like trying to catch a, you know, mist or a cloud or something. So <laughs> yeah. I can't say that. I okay. can't answer it okay. from that place of definitiveness because that's what it feels like. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes mm. it's just dumb luck. <laughs> you know, I don't want to, as spiritual as I am, sometimes I just believe that <laughs> shitty things do happen sometimes. Okay. And sometimes it's just dumb luck. Yeah. And I, yeah. I know that goes against like spirituality, <laughs> but I, 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 I contemplate all modalities. Okay. All right. Beautiful. I, li I like the I like the vision, the picture, the story, and really yeah. feeling. I I'm a big Dr. Joe Dispenza yeah. fan, student, and yeah. and my intention card, which we'll get to this. Uh, okay. Jonathan's going to give his weigh, weigh in on it. Um, has I have a column on here, which is what when I'm with my partner, these are the feelings I'm feeling, and as Dr. Joe says, the your thought sends it out and then the feelings draw it back. You send yes. the signal, the thought sends the signal out and then your, how you feel is magnetizing things to you. Yes. So I've always kind of held on to that. But um, so, and I, uh, I observe that there's the, you know, I think sometimes when we get too specific, we make the portal more, we put, we make, let's just say the portal for the universe to bring us what we want sometimes can be restrictive. Mm. So, so for example, I'll use like, oh, I'm looking like from a woman's perspective. I'd like him to be six foot two, yeah. you know, six pack abs, blah, blah, blah. Now you made it specific. How about he's just in good shape? Yeah. Like, so now the universe goes, oh, you know, I can get a guy, <laughs> but he's five, he's six, yeah. one and a half. Okay. <laughs> you know, and I'm just using this as an example. I agree, yeah. When you make it a little bit broader, but still encompasses what your heart, the your soul desires. It. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's when we get sometimes a little too granular, the universe goes, God, yeah. you're making it fucking tough on me. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, yeah. it's okay if I use the yes, effort. Yes, you can. Okay, you okay. can. <laughs> um, okay, beautiful. So um, we're going to free flow this. And again, we're, okay. we're going to tap in different topics. But I think it's a good place to start with something we have in common, okay. which is our work in self-love. Okay. And I know a, you are a huge advocate. I have a book. Yes, By the way, you my do. book's upstairs. And I have it on my phone, which we're okay. using to record. So okay. otherwise, I, I did some screenshots last night. Okay. And I... I love how you set it out, and um, I have seen that. I have seen that for myself, where in my marriage, where I wasn't loving myself, and all yeah. the things that that created, and that was um, really a big part. Has been a big part of my healing journey, is reclaiming and, and loving myself. Um, yeah, what's my question around that? <laughs> like, I think I love that you're teaching that. I guess maybe it's well, a so it's a compliment to you to as a as a coach and mentor that. 
that's front and center in the work. And, and I think if anything, for me, I teach the same thing with my clients. It's okay. chapter one of my book, okay. Authentic Self-Worth, okay. which self-love is a part of that. But it, it's so foundational. And are you seeing, I guess, in the people you're working with, and if you were to put a trend together, are you seeing more of people embracing that journey in midlife for themselves? Um. I, yes, partially because I, I beat the drum out of it over and over and over. So if you watch my videos and I've got a pretty decent sized YouTube channel. So to me, self-love encompasses a lot of different things. So the word itself sometimes is my book is called What the Heck is Self-Love yeah. Anyway? And the idea is it's self-worth, self-confidence, mm. self-esteem, self-respect, self-reliance, you know, uh, it's all those okay. self words. Mm. And the reason why I love is just it, because I think, you know, there's that saying, how do you love another if you don't love yourself kind yeah. of thing from a, but, and yet at the same time, I also recognize one of the hardest things to do as a human being is to love oneself. It's so easier to give love to everyone else. Like you give it to your children, you give it to your family, you give it to your yeah. friends. And oftentimes we are our own, for lack of a better word, our own worst enemy. So, and, and I, and I say that with a lot of reservation. When I say enemy, it's just we can oftentimes self-crucify. Mm. We can judge ourselves. We can shame ourselves. So the idea is when we open up to more love for ourselves, we become more of a magnetic attractor for the kind of romantic love. And so my dating coaching is just as much about what not to look for, like in other words, you know, like discernment, right. like kind of filter out what's not right and filter in what is right for you. But my biggest message is personal development, self-help, spiritual work, including therapy, mm. because you can enter, it's easy to get into a relationship. Relationships are easy. You can be in a relationship with someone that's, mis you can be miserable. It could be short lived. <laughs> I mean, they're actually easy to get into. Yeah. It's what I always say in my videos, a juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship requires a bit of work ahead of time mm. and then being able to work with a partner too. I know I, I am surrounded by so many couples mm -hmm. that couples coaching and therapy is part of their practice I as a couple. It. I love it. Like they do retreats, they do, you know, camps like what I was sharing with you mm -hmm. before. They do variety of things that is kind of like group therapy meets pajama party. <laughs> I jokingly I say. And and the idea is yeah. to do it with whether groups of people are individually yeah. or with a coach to help with communication skills. Mm. See, that's the other thing is most humans, believe it or not, don't recognize that their capacity to communicate in a way to be seen, heard, understood, and felt by your partner yeah. is oftentimes there's friction. Mm. And most everybody thinks the other person is the problem. Yeah, yeah. Talk to any therapist. A therapist yeah. will tell you every couples that comes in, they're doing this. <laughs> it's their fault. No, right. it's their fault. Right. Instead of this. Yeah, shining so it the starts mirror back here. in them. Yeah. All right. Couple things to unpack. Number one, I love the expanded how you roll all those different selves in. I that yeah. that really expanded my perspective of it, and I can see where um, it's it's like it balances the wheel, so to speak, right? Yeah. And I think I, I tend to focus on some areas, but I loved when I was reading speed reading your book last night. <laughs> I'm like, I it's an easy read, it's actually. A, it and by the way, it's intended it, to be. Like I love the untethered soul. Like that's one of my, my all-time favorite. I tried to do like as untethered soul light, oh, <laughs> and I mean like really, really oh, light. Beautiful. Like I, in yeah, the, in it's the very concept. digestible nuggets, yeah. which is great. Okay, and then the communication thing. I think, uh, and one of the things. Make sure we're recording. Yeah, one of the things I picked up from the book too that again we have in common, which is I love. I uh, we are we have we're cut from some of the same cloth yeah. because self responsibility is huge in my books. It's one of my core values yeah. I have on my website. And it's a core value of myself, self-responsibility for, for everything that's going on in my life, all I have. Yeah. And, and the communication thing, again, I can go back to, you know, my prior administration, as my neighbor calls it, when I was <laughs> married. And, and it was, it was like this kind of thing. And it was the other person's fault. And let me tell you, it's, it was so humbling for me to turn that mirror on myself yeah. and start to really get honest with myself. Yeah. It, it was like, it, it's not comfortable. And it's, yeah. it's, I had, there's shame I went through. There was sadness. There was a bunch of stuff came up and mm -hmm. 
on the other side is a lot of freedom and I, yeah. and I can see now and, and be so grateful now, but what, um, I don't know if somebody maybe is just starting that journey of the self exploration. What, sure. what little like pep talk can you give them to say, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I think first and foremost, so I'm going to give kind of an example of what happened in my own life. So I went through, God, it's 15 plus years ago. I was I just turned 40 and went through a divorce. And, uh, and I put myself out on the dating marketplace. Mm. And I'll never forget, I met this woman, nice woman, great date, something wasn't right. A couple of days later, met a nice woman, great date, something wasn't right. And a couple of days later, I mean, like this went on, and I mean, I'll be candid with you, I had 100 first dates in my okay. first year. <laughs> oh. And I realized that the common denominator was <laughs> me. So, and I, and I was like, oh. I, like it took me a hundred knocks on the door to go, wait a minute, this isn't, I'm the common denominator yeah. here. And so right at that time, the movie, The Secret came out, you know, What the Bleep came out. I started, I, I had these CDs of Tony Robbins that had been in a box for like <laughs> for 10 years. No, I think they were cassette tapes. Oh boy. Okay, just to give an example. <laughs> So I'm start listening to that. I started, and then I got introduced to Abraham. Okay. And little by little, I began doing introspective work. Mm. So first, I have to, at least for me, I had to identify that I'm the common denominator in all of my experiences. You called it self responsibility, yeah. which is exactly like taking ownership of my experience. Yeah. And then I immersed myself in studying. I mean, I did, um, over the years, I've done the Hoffman process. I've done insight seminars. I've done, I have a neuro-linguistic programming. You know, I went through a two-week course on that. I even did Reiki, wow. you know. Yeah. Um, I haven't done massage therapy yet, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, so, um, and, and I recognized that, oh, and I did therapy too. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was in a relationship for six years with a woman who was a therapist. Mm. So interestingly enough, it was kind of both romantic and it was like she was my therapist at the same time. Yeah. Because she helped me heal. And oh. particularly, she helped me heal my relationship with my ex-spouse. Mm. She was a big advocate for me to really heal my relationship with my ex-spouse. And that, mm. I, I mean, I wasn't planning on sharing this, but I realized that was such a huge catalyst for me to even be in a space because if there's, and I know a lot of people have contentious relationships yeah. and that's never going to change. She just encouraged me, just keep giving her love, keep giving her love, keep giving her love. And through the years of just doing that, yeah. it actually shifted mm, our relationship. Beautiful. So um, let's see, but what's the thing I'd like to recommend everyone? You have to want to, mm. I, when I say do the work, Mm -hmm. First, it takes real deep self-examination and saying, okay, every single thing in my past has been to some degree my experience, mm -hmm. to some degree. Not, mm -hmm. I mean, look, we can have, I mean, I'm not here to absolve people that have been physically or emotionally abused in their relationship, yeah. but, but our ability to stay in something longer than necessary, taking ownership of it. Yeah. And the minute you take ownership of it and you begin to notice your patterns. Mm. So this is where the book like love it or um, attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller to understand uh -huh. love attachment style, mm -hmm. to read the book, getting the love you want by Harvell Hendricks, love Helen Hunt too. to understand yeah. something known as the Imago. Um, just to name a few. Yeah. Helps an individual get better sense of why they made choices in their lives mm. in relationships. And since we're talking about midlife, yeah, many of us have been married once yeah. or twice. I mean, <laughs> I haven't been, and we've had one or two significant relationships. So, and we might have had little skirmishes along the way, yeah. too. <laughs> uh, little short lived uh, experiences. Yeah. So, when I believe taking ownership of everything helps put you on track, and then. I'm a junkie for personal development yeah. work. I think you yeah, are too. Like, totally, totally I mean, I'm exhausting to date, okay? Because <laughs> I like to unpack everything. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. I know. I gave you a lot there. I know. I, I'm sitting with it. I'm sitting with it because I, um, I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. And I, I sense that I would be resonating with your answer. And I think, you know, to what happened to you and what happened to me, we both had key things to happen. And, you know, so how negative things, right? You have the divorce that kind of started you on the track and, and are seeing like all these hundred dates and like 
what, why is nothing sticking? Why, why is oh, things can I bed? interrupt yeah, though? Sure. So what I didn't share, not only was I going through a divorce, I lost my high end corporate job, Oof. which I was making a significant six figure income. Um, and then the market crash. Wow. I think so, I read that in your book so, too. Yeah. So I, it's, it wasn't just the divorce. I had a complete wow. shattering of my identity. Wow. And I was using dating as kind of self-medication. Oh. Like it was a way to, because oh. you know, before swipe apps, but someone would write you and someone would say, oh, you're handsome. Or someone would say, I'm interested in meeting you. And, and you'd connect and you have that first chemistry going mm -hmm. on. And you'd be like, oh, I like you. You like me. And I felt a sense of self-worth when oh. others were reflecting upon me what was so lacking inside of me. Uh -huh. So when I said I had a hundred dates, there was this part of my person, my, my identity that was completely gone. Wow. And so the dating experiences were like, like, again, it was self-medication. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was preparing me for the path I'm on today. <laughs> like I didn't realize that all of this oh, experience gosh. led me to how I'm a dating relationship coach. Today. Yeah. And I coach from that place of, look, I understand the broken, wounded, divorced guy because, mm -hmm. you know, I went through alimony, child support, visitation rights, you know, wow. uh, dealing with what happens to us in midlife that yeah. isn't the same as our twenties and thirties. Yeah. Well, so the core, one of the core takeaways, if I were to sum, sum it up for those listening, watching, the self-awareness piece. So yes. ultimately, we both, in our yeah. own way, got to that place of self-awareness. For me, yeah. it was very much my, my crises when they had my wake-up calls when they happened. Yeah. And, and people can absolutely start that self-awareness now by just taking time to reflect on where they're at and where they want to be without having to have a crisis in their life, right? So... Well, that's interesting. So the answer is yes. And <laughs> humbling events are gigantic. I mean, the, the hard part about a humbling event is you spend time in the pit of despair, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, I guess it's Jericho in the biblical sense or Joseph okay. or, um, in, or excuse me, Joseph in that pit of despair, you know, having a humbling event can take white, you know, knock your knees, knock you off your, your, your foundation for a while. Um, at the same time, I do believe, I, I think we, or at least I can, let me just say it for myself. I tend to learn more from my mistakes <laughs> than my successes. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I don't know if you feel the same way, but it's like Absolutely. I had to experience. Absolutely. Right. Like, like I did a video yesterday, <laughs> like the seven things I wished I knew mm. before I got divorced. But if I heard everything today, I wouldn't have listened. No, right, right, right. So that's why I come, said, yeah, I wish I right knew time. them, yeah. <laughs> not advice I would have heard. Yeah. Because, if, you know, like. That's a good point. We ha I believe that the experience itself is part of the journey. It is. The contrast is part of the journey. It is. And, and to your point, and, and, I, and I say this in, in the work I do, everybody comes to that point in their own way, in their own time. Some people does take that big you know, crash for other people. They just start getting to the point where I'm just not happy or they start looking at their age and like the clock is ticking. I like, I want, I have all this external success. Now I want that inner fulfillment. And oh, by the way, I want somebody really, you know, soulful to share that journey with yeah. me. And then they start to go on that, their own awakening journey. Yeah. So, um, well, let me share something with everybody. So I, I'm, you know, when I shared that I lost my professional and my money, particularly for men, that is such a, such a critical focal point of our identity mm. that it really crushed me. The work I did, whether it's all, I mean, I, I mean, not only the, the coach, even being a coach has been, you know, helpful for me. Like in other words, helping others has been helping me and certainly all the things I've done. The self-love work is like a vaccination to emotional chaos by doing the mm. inner work. So by the time, and I'm going to share with your audience, I lost a child mm. uh, in 2018. And most parents would say that would wipe them out. Mm -hmm. Most parents would say, I probably couldn't survive that. I think doing all the work ahead of time prepared me for this experience. And I, and I'm, you know, I, and don't get me wrong. I've cried. I mean, yeah. I still cry to this day, but it didn't wipe me out. Yeah. And I, that's what personal development, self-help, spiritual work, self-love, 
prepares you mm -hmm. for so then when you do have a possibly a humbling of another humbling event you're just not wiped out by it yeah yeah and actually he was the impetus for writing the book mm, beautiful so um it, it was actually i was writing a different book it was called compassionate dating ah. uh I, I never trademarked this, so I don't want to give the rest of the title okay. out if I ever do write it. But um, but I immediately felt called to writing a book about self love because when losing a child was, I had a choice. I could grieve with suffering, or I chose to grieve with love. Mm. And so, whatever that means to any individual, what it meant for me was to just really examine my own life, because. We have no control. Yeah. I mean, he was gone in a yeah. in, in five minutes. Wow. Like, and you know, I had a friend who recently passed away. It was cancer, and we knew it coming for months. Mm -hmm. But we have no control when things are going to happen. So yeah. learning to appreciate every moment um, is really, I think, one of the greatest gifts we have, mm. or we can. Let me reframe that. I think. By learning to appreciate every moment, it's a gift we give up to ourselves. I and that's a self-love love gift. I love that. I love that. Well, I think you talk about it in the book, too, to stop complaining. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that is definitely, a, a, like, that was, a, that was a fast, easy drop for yeah. me. Like, stop complaining. You're, you know, you've got your life. You've got your kids. You've got this. You've got that. Like, oh, I want you to goodness. read a book by Larry Wingett called Shut Up, Stop Whining, and Get a Life. Ah. And it really, it, that's my, my chapter is the embodiment of that. Okay. Uh, but it's really, because complaining energy, and, and certainly in the dating realm, I even yeah. said it earlier, feeling frustration, feeling disappointment, feeling, oh, oh by the way, and I know, I see this happen with my, my, my clients are mostly women. They're swiping on a guy or someone emailed them on a dating app. Okay. And they're, what's that? What is, why, what, <laughs> what, what makes him think I'd be interested in him? <laughs> like I, I hear that attitude. Yeah. It's some, or, or a yeah. variation of that. Like, who is he thinking messaging me? Yeah. He's so not my type. That it so lacks love and compassion. Mm. That, mm. that attitude, the minute you look at another human being with even mm. the remote, even just a tiny little bit of disgust, yeah, that's the least loving, that, that, oh. amp, that is such an amplification of no love. Mm. You're calling me out here because ah. I have, on my Bumble app, I have 500 likes. And I'm like, I just scrolled through a few of the pictures. I'm like, like, did they even read my profile? You know, so. Okay, so let's play with that one <laughs> yeah. for a second. Did they yeah. know? They saw a photograph right. and they're just giving it a shot. Yeah. Now their reason I'm behind more it. Of it. Yeah. yeah, you're making well, to some degree you're making it more than it, but it could be, hey, I just thought you were attractive. I, right. I swiped. Or I felt you were a kindred spirit and then I swiped. Whatever their reason for swiping, it's yeah. irrelevant. Yeah. How you looked at that yeah. speaks volumes of where your heart is at. So you want this gigantic love, sweetheart, but you but so when I swipe left. I send you love. I send you love. I send you love. I send you love. I wish you the best. I wish you the best. I wish you the best. While I'm critiquing the hell out of them. I'm just kidding. All right. Well, before you know, you know what I critique? I'm like, no, this is terrible. But I'm like, are you that stupid to put that shitty photograph as your first photo? Yeah. I'm sorry. I there is so much apathy in the effort human beings put to curate a profile okay is, and i'm i'm just angry because i'm a voice because i i recognize that that apathy is ignorance or nativity okay, okay i get that mm -hmm. you genuinely want a life partner yeah like you want that that's that's yeah. like the biggest decision you're ever going to make in your life it's i mean whether for some people that was you know their professional capacity or having a child no your life yeah. partner is the biggest decision. You should put gigantic maximum quality effort. Mm. I'm just anal about that. Yeah. And it saddens me how men and women, and I'm saying the ladies are just as equally okay. as bad at curating a profile for themselves. And then they wonder why they have poor experiences. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little bit I mean, this is where my <laughs> spiritual warrior comes out. And I'm just like, I'm going to yell at you for okay. being stupid. But I don't mean it that way. I say it with You're a saying lot it with of, love. I, love. I sense okay? that. I sense it. Okay, so before we segue into some of the specific dating stuff, 
Okay. I want to backtrack a little bit. And you talked about your journey of having gone through your divorce and then the, the, these dates. And then this is kind of how you got into your work when you yeah. started the self-reflection. And, yeah. and um, can you give uh, for my dear audience here a bit of your journey sure. of how you became this very well-known, <laughs> popular, the guy's got an amazing YouTube channel. I love it. Um, you're so... I see the love that you're bringing into the work that you do and, yeah. and how much you're advocating for those midlife people that do want to find a partner. So yeah. how did you get into being so, this <laughs> midlife dating expert? So I don't like the word expert, but I it's appreciate not, okay. it. No, no. What's a better uh, word? No, no, no. And I'm, not, I'm just saying that I'm, I'm more of a, um, well, I just have a perception and opinion and I share it. And if it resonates with someone, great. If it doesn't, that's fine too. Uh, only because human behavior is so nuanced and complex i don't care anyone who says they're an expert in my mind each individual is like a thumbprint they're so different mm. and unique that advice that's generalized doesn't necessarily work for everybody is my point okay, okay. so how did i get into this so i told you i had 100 first dates yes okay a lot of times i'm communicating with half a dozen women at the same time mm. all over the country oh wow a lot of it over the telephone i'd have one two three four five six seven i even had an eight hour conversation with a woman <laughs> once we started at 8 p.m we finished at four in the morning uh. and it was my therapy oh i we were she, she was telling me about her divorce i'm telling her about my divorce we're we're bonding in this shared experience and what happened was i began really listening to what and every woman's experience. And I started to notice a common denominator in like, so excuse me, let me backtrack. So then we would just talk to each other in a friendly capacity, non-romantic, because I could be talking to lots of different people. And, and I would just, I would say, oh, how's dating going for you? And they'd start to tell me the dating experiences and I'd share my dating experiences. And then it would be like, like I would start noticing patterns. I'm like, God, I'm hearing the same version mm. of a guy out there. Mm. So I just started to notice patterns. Okay. Because I was spending every single night for years talking to women on the phone. Wow. Sometimes physically meeting them, sometimes just talking on the phone. Um, and You then, were committed. <laughs> I was, you know what? Because I was lonely, I was by Aww. myself, and I had nothing to do. Okay. You know, I didn't have, I mean, to the extent when I had my children, I spent time with them, but I was in a really dark place. Mm. And... Pretty soon I made friends with women and then I'd get a phone call. Hey, Jonathan, what do you think I should do to change my profile to make it better? I'd like a guy's perspective. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, do this photo, this photo, and this photo, take this one out, rewrite this, blah, 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 blah. And then I'd get a phone call like three weeks later. Jonathan, I met a really great guy based on your suggestions. Uh -huh. This wasn't happening once, Christine, over and over wow. and over again. And for close to two years or more. Wow. I um, was just, I didn't realize by de facto, I was preparing myself for my next evolution. That's so Because cool. I was out of work. Okay, so <laughs> okay. remember I said I lost yeah. my corporate job. Yeah. I was draining finances. Okay. I, was, I was in a dark place. Mm. But this was, this was, like I said, self-medication. It wasn't healthy per se, but it wasn't unhealthy either because yeah. I was in, in, you know, it wasn't like I was being disingenuous with anyone. So I then dated a woman who was a, a life coach, an internet marketing coach, a very successful multimillionaire. I, I got introduced to her and dated her for about five months. And I got to see the inner world of coaching. Ah. Okay. So I was like, oh, this is fascinating. So about, I think it was a year after we had our brief relationship. And by the way, I was a train wreck then. So the fact that she accepted <laughs> me was actually, well, because she saw the potential. In yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Actually, a lot of women dated me and saw the potential. <laughs> by the way, I can recognize those guys that look like they're, well, I actually did evolve. Obviously, I of did. It just you took did. Long, I mean, yeah. I eventually did. So the potential wasn't misplaced. Right, right. Um, but when I saw her world, I thought, this was right around when putting up a landing page and a sales page and a website was like the wild west. <laughs> so I put together a cheesy website. Uh. <laughs> and then three weeks later, I get a telephone call or an email. Would you be interested in being a guest on a radio show? Oh my gosh. I'm like, really? I'm like, okay. I mean, those first few years I was talking out of my ass. 
<laughs> I mean, just, it was the world according to Jonathan. And honestly, it hasn't changed much since then. That's why I, I, I only rebuff a little bit of the term expert. Okay. Um, uh, but funny. what I began doing, I got a hold of every relationship book out there. I started mm. to read book after book after book. I watched videos. Wow. I started to do workshops. I did, like I said, the Hoffman process, Insight Institute, personal development. I just immersed myself wow. in wanting to understand human pair bonding. Mm. And so while I started as just helping improve profiles and then helping women understand men, it has morphed in the last decade and a half to being more of an advocate for individual empowerment. And the reason why I focus mm. on women, you ladies are these beautiful creatures. <laughs> you guys are so loving, so compassionate. And at the same time, you give you have a tendency to give your power away to men because we've literally been indoctrinate, indoctrinated in men are the provider protectors and they're supposed to lead the relationship process. Yeah. In the, in the midlife category, which 75% of singles are divorced, you have a very broken, dysfunctional population. You don't want to give responsibility for leadership of the relationship <laughs> to a guy. So I'm an advocate. You take, you know, if um, you are in charge of your own relationship destiny, you don't give that to a guy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm an advocate for that because I've witnessed so many women give their power away. So I'm an advocate for yeah. personal empowerment. That's yeah. what, Sovereignty is the essence of self-love, mm. individual sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So I can quickly identify when a woman's given her power away and I can hopefully wow. uh, cause her to rethink wow. her strategy. Yeah. Well, okay. So by the way, does that yes. feel true? Yes. I mean, you observe this with your oh, clients. It, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah, totally. And, and if I look at my own journey where yeah. I have I have little by little, in fact, last year was a big thing of me really reclaiming more of my power than yeah. ever before. But I want to go back to you for a second and then we'll come back to this. Okay. Is like, I'm impressed and I, I know I've heard your story before, but just sitting here talking to you, I like, I feel like you were the mad scientist almost like, right? With not bad in a bad way, but you were so like excited or died just into all that you were learning you really wanted to understand it and then apply it and, and then be able to teach it and you're that's exactly what you're doing now and i can see why you why i'm calling you an expert because I feel like <laughs> you need to clean that a little bit maybe well, you know no and i appreciate that and i didn't share this earlier uh, but i also was addicted to cocaine during this time okay and i and i bring this up because wow it was self-medication mm. whether it's you know alcohol yeah. whether it's one glass of wine a night or something else i think to some degree when we're in pain we're looking for ways to avoid pain mm -hmm. and so this and, and for for quite some time i i was self-medicating was the it was the dating it was the you know drugs it okay. was the going out and and i'm able to wreck see here's the thing I understand what a man goes through when his identity is crushed, when he goes through a divorce. I understand the emotional effects and I understand it at such a level that I was abusing myself. Mm. So I feel like I'm wow. even a better coach because I can recognize when a man is in this pain mm -hmm. and guide my clientele either to, you know, steer in a completely different direction or be yeah. a support person yeah. if that's the choice you're going to make. So. I've been, when I say I've been in the pit of despair, yeah. I mean, I've had like wow. the perfect storm, wow. including the loss of a child. So um, I speak from that place. Yeah. Wow. What a journey. What a journey. And you, I, again. By the way, I'm grateful for every you, moment. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. No, like I, the I, mad I scientist. I yeah. love that. Yeah. I'm like, I'm fucking, I'm <laughs> constantly going, oh, how can we peel an onion a different right, way? Right, right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, so you've seen, you've studied a lot, learned a lot, seen a lot, you, yeah, and and I, I get I get where you're at and how you're so passionate about it, and I so appreciate where who you are now, where you are now, in that um, again I feel this resonance with you, and and because you were so willing to do the work and just keep keep at it, you knew it maybe you didn't know, but at some point you would come out from the clouds and and have these. I'm having an interesting awareness right now. I think part of my passion for helping women was because I'm so grateful that they gave love to this train wreck 
Mm. There were moments where I was rather disingenuous mm. to some degree. I was out of integrity. Let me give you an example. Chemistry is a powerful motivator to go, oh my God, you're the most amazing woman I've ever saw. Oh my God, you're so beautiful. You're so wonderful. I can see us getting married in the next three months. You are so amazing. Let's go on a trip together. We call that love bombing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So chemistry is such a powerful, you know, driver to like be in that, sh like a feeding frenzy, like a shark. Okay. okay? And so there were times where I was kind of disingenuous. Mm. And so I, I don't know if this is my atonement, if you okay. will, in my hero's <laughs> journey, but to some degree, I do have a bit of shame mm. over my past experience. So I'm a strong advocate. Like I always say, I'm your big brother. Mm. If I could be there on a first date, I'd have a shotgun pointed at the guy's <laughs> face and say, what's your intention with my little sister? I've, I've, I've taken on the role uh. of big brother or father. It's because I, I'm going to say part of it is driven by guilt and shame too. Because mm. I wasn't, I, I look back now and I'm not very proud. Okay. My, like I've ghosted. Okay. You know, I've said a lot of things and then completely changed my tune the next day. Okay. Um, so I'm an advocate for buyer beware. Too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not, yeah. To, not to suggest to be from a place of an alarmist per se. There are just a lot of human beings that are hurting out there. Okay. We all want companionship, connection, and sex. Yeah. But are they really capable? Good point. And I'm an advocate, like, look, you got to, yeah. that's like the most important piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Is are they capable? And you have mm -hmm. to be, you have to be radically discerning. I love that. I'm a, my whole coaching program is about discernment. Yeah. Which leads to better intuition. Yeah. I'll tell you, that's been okay. huge for me because um, a relationship that I was in, I finally got to the point where I was telling myself, take the rose colored glasses yeah. off, Christine, take them off and just sit, sit still and just do, I did this reflection with myself and it, it actually helped me to, to pivot a bit and, and take my power back to your point of taking my power back and where I was really like, putting so much more into, it was a fantasy. I was, I had created a bit of a, a fantasy versus this is, this is the truth of where, what this relationship is right now or the dynamics and don't make it more than what it is. So it, uh, it took me taking time to sit and reflect, taking the glasses off and really then stepping forward from that place of, of that honesty with myself and discerning that, yeah, this, so don't make so, more than that's what's really here so we have this amazing capacity to gaslight ourselves mm. so we can take a red flag and paint it green mm. okay because and, and it, it could be a trivial red flag or it could be a gigantic red flag okay. right so and i say gaslight because we can talk ourselves into yes <laughs> like because we see this other good stuff over here right yes and you go okay I'll try to accept that kind of thing yeah. or I'll like, I'll negate it or I'll make it trivial. Right. Tri yeah. I tri we trivialize, trivialize it. things. Yeah. And, and so here's the thing. And you and I talked about this before we got, we started to record, you know, every experience, even a short lived experience is, is an experience. That's why a lot of times I don't even use the word relationship. I say experience. Yeah. And even a one year relationship or experience where, and I think sometimes they just need to write its course. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you, yeah, you overlooked it, you mm -hmm. painted the red flag green, you gaslit yourself, but there were all these other good facets to it. Yeah. If, if we go too far past the expiration point and really start compromising ourselves, mm -hmm. That's the disservice we do okay. because it's okay to enter into a relationship that doesn't go anywhere. I think we yeah. are so indoctrinated in this. It has to be the distance. I'm with you. And so, I'm and I'm not you. advocating short-lived experiences either. I'm not right. saying that. I'm just simply saying sometimes we need that as a catalyst or a birthing, as you and I mm -hmm. talked about before, into a next evolution of who we are. Yeah. So I went on a hundred first dates. Okay. We go, Oh my God, that's like exhausting. And by the way, from a financial perspective, because we men are expected to pay, that was kind of, 
Uh, they spent a lot of money. I'm like, I, I, a therapist might have been less expensive, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. Uh, um, so, so it's it's in other words, when we can look at something from that place, everything is a gift, even a short lived experience. Yeah. It's when we go too past the gift. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, you're clinging on, you're almost clinging on to things. Um, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I, and like you said, we talked about this a little bit. I, I, I do want that long-term partner. Yeah, and yeah. part of my shift has been in being okay if there's something short-term with somebody. Yeah. Because the shift for me recently, and then we were talking about it, is what's in front of me now. And if somebody comes into my life and there's, I feel a connection and there's something kind of stirring that I have this curiosity about, and, and maybe not everything on the card lines up, but like yeah. there's something there. Yeah. It's, it's an exploration. And I've had a first date that gave me a book, the name of a book. I okay. read the book and the book changed my life. Mm. So I truly believe that if we just allow ourselves to open up and let, I'm going to say God source universe bring to us that next golden nugget on our path. Yeah. It was hard for me to give a give. I was holding on so long to that. It's got to be this one perfect person. And even now with my vision, I'm okay if there's one, two, three, four, five. I, there's no, I'm not saying the next person has to be the person. I, I'm, I, I it's such a, it's such a ooh, freeing. freeing and it's a more relaxed place yeah. and it's a more fun place is what I'm, I'm coming to see because again, I'm, I'm, I can be discerning in the moment. Does it feel good? Does it feel right? Does it, does it feel expansive or, and if it does, then do it. Yeah. And if not, then don't. And just know that you met a cool soul, but you don't feel any interest in engaging in anything. You know, I had, um, it was right before new year's Eve. I had a conversation with a woman who recognized me or she wrote me on, on a, a dating site. She recognized me. Okay. So, and she happened to live in Arizona and I live in Los Angeles. Okay. For your audience. So, um, so I wrote her back and then she wrote me this really sweet message back. Like she didn't expect me to write her back. So we ended up having a dialogue and we got on a telephone call and, oh my God, we are hitting it off. <laughs> I mean, like, it was just like one after another, after another, after another, after another, we're just hitting it off. And we're like, like we reached a point, like, do we want to explore like the mm. idea of a relationship together? Now, she happened to live in Arizona. I live here. And, um, and we agreed that we'd, we'd speak the following morning. And we spoke the following morning. She goes, look, I really don't want to leave where I'm at. My children are here, that sort of thing. And I feel the same here. So it's a logistical thing. And we just agreed to go our separate ways kind of thing. My reason for sharing that is I had a six-hour date. Okay, It wasn't <laughs> in person. Okay, yeah. It was over the phone. But I started to write down all of the experiences I had, this, the, the resonances and, the, ah. and where we were aligned with each other and where our values were the same and where we had these commonalities. And I felt the, the qualities of what she represented. And I put together like this list of like 30 things wow. that happened in the six hour experience. How cool is that? And I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is the framework for what I want to embody. So even a six hour telephone call, um, you know, has, yeah. again, as you said, even a date, okay. Yeah. Maybe they introduce you to a book. Maybe it's just, you recognize something in them yeah. that you recognize within yourself. I'm saying when we can look at these experiences as gifts yeah. and not so attached to the outcome, because that's mm -hmm. the real tough piece. Mm -hmm. I think it's so it's such mm. human nature. Yeah. And I think women more so than men, and I'll share with you why I think it's different for okay. women. I think for hundreds of thousands of years, women have predominantly been dependent upon men. Mm. So it's almost biological that women crave commitment more so than men. Okay. Men oftentimes went out hunted and they died. Okay. Mm. And women, that's one of the reasons why women live longer than men. You yeah. know I mean, men just died off younger than women oftentimes, but I think there's almost a biological desire for commitment 
that's a little bit different than men. Okay. So, or, or like, and I'm talking about hundreds of thousands yeah, of years yeah. of the evolution yeah, yeah. of our of our imprinting and such like that. So, I, when we when I when I've learned to let go, and when I know that you've let go of the attachment to the outcome, which that's a mm -hmm. Buddhist way of viewing mm -hmm. at things. It's interesting how you can appreciate your experiences yeah. in a different way. Yeah. No, that the unattached thing has been definitely a part of my journey. And so I had something about spirituality. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to ask you. Okay. So spirituality, Jonathan, is a big thing for me. It's, I kind of. Give me a bump. Me too. I live and breathe. <laughs> I, I don't know. I live, it's like my essence is like, I see, in fact, it's on my profile and we can maybe talk about my profile in a bit is. I am a spiritual being have a, having a physical experience. Yes. I believe that. I feel that. And it's it's transformed my life. Yeah. So how and I, I'm gonna say I, I'm gonna say this, I'm saying this from a humble place. I I feel I'm really I've evolved so much. If I just look at the last year, yeah. and so if I go back five years, like I've evolved so much. Like I want that man who I see my partner being very close. And a gal said it to me yesterday at this event, they're within the same bandwidth. Like there's yes. these bandwidths. They don't have to be exactly where I'm at, but they have to be yeah. that bandwidth. Yeah. And how, like, what's your advice? And is it through my profile? Is it through how I'm sure where I'm going? <laughs> how do I, how do I enhance my possibilities of magnetizing that guy to me? Yeah, so you mentioned bandwidth, and I, I, I think of it like watermark or bandwidth in that same context, because what you're really talking about is alignment. Mm. Are they aligned with, because spirituality is, is a value for you. It's, a, it's an embodiment of your being. And, and by the way, for those, you know, when I think of the word spirituality, I simply think of the connection to our higher self, the connection to our divine self, our connection to our divinity, our wisdom, our, our, you know, wisdom beyond our physical, physical. experience. Okay. And, I I, like and because I, I want to differentiate from re religion. Because Thank you. Yeah. Religion has a spiritual component to it, but I think of spirituality as part of the inner journey, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, well, first, I mean, we talked about this, you know, certainly. Okay, here's where it gets tricky. Someone's <laughs> dating profile like, like under religion. There's an option for spiritual, but not yes. religious. Some people are Christian and Catholic yes. by, by for, they're so ingrained in it, but they're spiritual. In other words, they're just so, excuse me, not ingrained. They're just so used to being considered Catholic or Christian, but they actually have a spiritual component. Got to it. it. So, the, so it becomes tricky if you start to filter out or filter in just for spirituality. Okay. So then on some of the dating apps, they include mindfulness as a, or or depth, or they add a couple other right. um, self awareness. Self awareness, chats, yeah. So those are certainly things to look for. Um, if you you could just simply do a search for that, okay? You could be really laser focused, and mm -hmm. you can do that mm -hmm. and do it from the. Parameters. I did that on I think uh, Hinge, either Hinge or the League. Okay, you can search. I think it's maybe the League. Okay. Yeah. And so that's one way to do it. Also, just right in your first telephone call. So one of the things I advocate okay. in my coaching, it's a technique called radical honesty, pre-qualifying your prospect. Mm. So, and I use it because it's a sales terminology pro perspective. It's a prospective date or it's a prospective boyfriend. So asking those questions, like my second, okay, my first question I ask a woman, yeah. right on the get-go, I'm like, look, I'm going to ask you some deep questions or, you know, you know, just to see if we're a fit for one another. Is that okay? First question is, what type of relationship are you looking for? Okay. What does commitment look like for you? What does commitment mean to you? Those mm. are the couple of first few questions. Love that. And then my second question is, are you familiar with personal development, self-help, and spiritual work? And if you have, do you have a daily practice? Oh, I love that too. So if they're like deer in the headlights, <laughs> I'm like, okay, how many more minutes do I have to be polite before I end this phone call? <laughs> okay. And I'm being tongue-in-cheek here, yeah. but I'm like, I... I, and, and, you know, because some people might have dabbled in it. I, I think you and I are both, it's, it's part of our lives. I mean, it, exactly. It embodies my life. So somebody yeah. I would ideally want someone, I think you're in the same boat with me 
is that you want someone that embodies their life. So you just start yeah. with the first couple questions and okay. you can do it via text messaging right, too. Right, right. Um, and that would be uh, the I way love to, that because I haven't been doing that. Chase. Yeah. And I'll, and the phone calls, I've had a couple phone calls that were 90 minutes long. Mm -hmm. Very nice. We talked about a lot of stuff and I did weave in the spirituality, but I wasn't as direct. I'm like fuck that shit. Yeah. Just get it done right <laughs> away. You can you know because here's the thing, a lot uh, of my contemporaries just go have fun, have fun. Yeah. It's all about having fun. Yeah. Well, you can have fun with somebody and then spend four or five dates only to find out yeah. you completely misaligned. I'm like, yeah. let's cut to the chase sooner rather than later. Now, certainly you can go to spiritual retreats and go meet people. Mm -hmm. um, certainly maybe even going to an Abraham workshop might be someone where's yeah. aligned at Joe Dispenza. Yeah. I'm doing a Hoffman process thing next week. So I know there'll be like-minded people there. Right. Um, those, those, you know, right. yoga is another place where people tend to congregate mm -hmm. or meditation um, mm -hmm. facilities. I did um, a group meditation recently or um, breath work thing. That yeah, was breath work. Co-ed, but I, yeah. you need, I need to give myself time to get there early so you can kind of mingle before everybody's on the mats yeah. doing the thing. So, all right. I like that. Um, okay. So I am going to absolutely switch my, my phone calls to be more direct in. And by the way, that. When I say, okay, it's not very but romantic. Not, yeah. It's not romantic. Let's be clear. It's not romantic. At the same time, you say, hey, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions just to see if we're a fit? Yeah. And so we don't waste each other's time. Now, that's polite. It's not romantic. It's mm -hmm. polite. How a person responds to that speaks volumes at mm. their openness. Mm. If they're closed, like, oh, this feels like an interview, right? Yeah. That actually speaks volumes of their capacity to meet you at that watermark we were okay. talking about. Yeah. So I use watermark yeah. different than band. So there's the bandwidth. Okay. But if their watermark is here, right. like their capacity to meet you mm -hmm. is very closed and restrictive. Yeah. Like I start with like radically hard <laughs> questions right from the get-go. Yeah. If I don't but lose I, them then, then maybe there's a chance. But I do it with humor. <laughs> So I, I will sometimes say, you know, oh, how gosh. fucked up are you? <laughs> I'll come up with my approach. Okay. I don't I think know. I'm that direct. Okay. So I, there are two things. So you see on the table, we've got some papers. It's not because we're messy. Um, there are a couple, <laughs> couple things we were talking about maybe getting to. One is I have this intention card. Okay. And I, I've shared it. I shared it on my other. Um, oh my God, it's scribbly. I know. <laughs> But I'm gonna maybe I'll get Jonathan's. I mean, I'm not actually looking for your advice on this or perspective, but maybe you have some nugget. So here's what I, I call it: my sacred partner card, and I have my intention that I say I'm in a. I added monogamous, but I am in a. In a I'll just forget that now. I'm a conscious. I am in a conscious, loving relationship with my compatible, divine life partner, soulmate, my sacred partner, and then I say he is spiritually awake and evolved consciously. Then everything else is mostly a we. We have a deep soul connection. Oh, okay. We have an open, loving, conscious. We have open, loving, conscious communication. We are growth oriented and supportive of each other's individual desires, growth, healing, health, and purpose. We have amazing chemistry and are sexually very compatible. I lead with my feminine. He with his masculine. We are financially secure and wealthy. We have a ton of fun together, laughing, doing things, just hanging out, dancing. I added dancing. That's okay. Kind of it. We have beautiful, muscular, healthy, fit bodies. <laughs> you know, and it's it's that it's that taking care. I, I yeah, no, I got know, it. Taking yeah, I care of it. ourselves. I'm not looking for you know whatever. Uh, we have a lot of a lot in common. Here we go: lifestyle okay. values and life philosophies. Okay. So you talked about lifestyle really being something that you need to line up with. Now I don't specifically say these are kind of elements of my lifestyle. Yeah. You know, dancing. Um, financial peace, taking care of our bodies, communication. Maybe talk a bit about lifestyle because I know you said you can have the chemistry and you can have this, but if lifestyles don't align, it's it's not. So, go. so first off, I love your list. Okay, okay? and Thank I'm so you. glad. I, I thought I wasn't going to say all he, but I'm glad oh, that you you have we he, written there. Yeah. What's the he piece again? There is, uh, he's he leads spiritual. with his masculine and, no. and me with my feminine. Okay, but the he is spiritual. He so is spiritual. Everything else is we. So yeah. I just want you to know, I love this. Oh, I absolutely you. love it. It's almost identical to my own. Okay. <laughs> I'll share that with you later. Um, so 
What was the question again? Um, the lifestyle piece. Oh, lifestyle piece. I don't piece. say in my card what the lifestyle looks like. So, well, I know in my videos I, I describe lifestyle like this. Yeah. You know, I say that, uh, and by the way, folks, I, I say this habitually in my videos just to give you context. I say I'm looking for a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal and our professional life. Intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. Mm. Okay. So that's kind of the framework. That's oh, kind of okay. a framework to look at. So let's look at lifestyle. For example, you meet somebody. So, um, I'm assuming you have a you you have a laptop lifestyle. You can work from wherever yes. you want. Yes. Okay. So um, so you have that flexibility. Yes. Now let's say you met a man who has a traditional job and he's a workaholic. Mm. Okay. He meets everything here for argument's sake. Okay. Okay. But he's a workaholic. He gets up at six in the morning. He doesn't come back at ten o'clock at night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is he going to fit in with the life that I you don't have? I think so. Okay. No. Even though it might fit what it might sound like yeah. it fit here, but he can only do it part time, yeah. you know, at his beck and call kind of thing. Okay. Or somebody who um, is raising small children. Mm -hmm. Does that fit into mm. your lifestyle where you're at right now? Yeah. I don't think so. Probably no. not. Okay. So, um, so it's lifestyle is really about, can you blend lifestyles together? So recently on the golden bachelor, that just, you know, the Golden Bachelor divorce yeah. was they couldn't blend their lifestyles mm. together. Now, you would think they would have these conversations ahead of time, right. which they probably did, but they were operating as, oh, my God, if we love each other, it'll just magically work out. Well, right. dating is, a, is about experiencing each other in each other's lifestyle to see where you blend together. Okay. So it's just being aware mm -hmm. of where a person at is in their life and being aware because here's the tricky part at midlife. We're all kind of set in our ways. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're kind of set in our way. And women tend to, not always, oh, I'll just morph myself for the guy. Yeah. Well, that doesn't always work either. Yeah. You know, that puts a lot of pressure on adapt. Women are already frustrated enough that they have to morph for the guy, but they have a propensity to do that. And that doesn't necessarily guarantee success anyway. Yeah. Am I making sense with yeah, that? Yeah, no, totally. Uh, 1,000%. And, and by the way, yeah. each other's homes, how far apart you live from each other. This is where long distance dating yeah. becomes hugely problematic because the reality is, is, you know, even if you live 30 miles away from someone, how Okay, the early parts of dating, that's easy. You can go back right. and forth. What are you going to do six months, a year, five years down the road? Right. Is that sustainable? Is that, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. being having that awareness, so especially when you do long distance where you're getting on an airplane. Yeah. Oof. I see so many women, particularly, or men, I mean, well, obviously it takes a man to do it too, um, that are engaging in long distance cyber relationships yeah. where they spend months, if not years, talking on the phone yeah. and they're like in this fantasy bubble. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've, I've known of people that same yeah. way. And I, yeah, uh, my, I think my range is 25 miles and it used to be even less. <laughs> I'm like 25 miles. I think I can, I can handle that. So, and, and I do, I do see with all the tech and everything people. And oh I'm my God, I just figured out who you remind me of. Who? The, the daughter in modern family. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I interrupted okay, everyone. Okay. <laughs> I get all like kinds it. of different people. Okay. Like I, I can't remember is, her name. So the distance thing. And okay. So this is another thing I've yeah. learned from you is to have, before you get physical, like have those, have these conversations because once the whole intimacy ki thing kicks off, you're again, you're clouded and yeah. you're like, oh, we can make anything work. But again, is, you know, uh, is that really true for the long term? And again, yeah. And by the way, I mean, not to suggest process. that love can't be that all that, but it's also being pragmatic too. Mm -hmm. it's just this is all about awareness yeah. and self responsibility. Yeah, this is where the the chemical cocktail that happens in chemistry and the fantasy and the illusion. There's an element where being pragmatic. Mm -hmm. is about being grounded, mm -hmm. being grounded in your self-responsibility. Yeah. Because let's face it, the chemical cocktail yeah. is so it's intoxicating. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. and But it's not sustainable. So the grounded thing to me also, I think of, 
again, being honest with myself because sometimes, and I've seen this when, when something's come up and it, it might not be a fit, but yeah. there's something there for me to learn. Kind of yeah. what we, you know, we've talked about before in that, okay, so I'm going to go against my 30, 25 mile rule yeah. because there's something, it's something I can't even name it sometimes. It's just something that's oh. drawing me to that person. And then I end up having this big aha in my life. Like you said, it's been an experience that kicks off yeah. the next level of my journey closer to my person. So I think I, part so, of it is that last little thread of, is there still something there that defies the discernment? Then go for it, is what so, I would say. Um, to be, you know, to be transparent, I was in a relationship with someone for about a year and a half at, um, where it was long distance, which I'm not an advocate for it, but we had a lifestyle that could have you know, worked around that and we eventually moved in together. What's interesting is our first telephone call, I didn't like our first phone call. Mm. I even told her I didn't like it uh, when she reached <laughs> out the second time. But, and I told her what happened and, and I don't want to share publicly but yeah. out of respect for her. It was this interesting thing. I think my intuition knew she wasn't the right long-term person for me. But I had this other like strong pull that wasn't physical. I had this strong energetic pull that I meant to experience something mm. with this person. And she said the same thing. So our relationship lasted a year and a half and we had a very conscious uncoupling. But I, I think back now, there are times when we're pulled to people, maybe because they're not meant to go the distance, but they're meant to bring a gift in your life. And mm. she brought so many gifts to my life. She said, I have brought so many gifts into her life that while it wasn't meant to go the distance, yeah. we were really a catalyst for each other mm -hmm. for our next evolution of who we are and where we're at in our lives. So coming back to what I, we were talking about earlier, whether it's a short lived six hour experience yeah. or one date or yeah. even a year and a half relationship. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do believe that we're all, you know, they're just experiences. Yeah. And, yeah. And that's where then to me, as I'm sitting here listening to you, it's that again, being in that place of awareness of like our unattachment and like it, ha it was here for a reason. I always say reason, season, lifetime. Yeah, yeah, Somebody's yeah. in my life for a reason, a season, a lifetime. And again, to have the appreciation and the gratitude for that person, for yeah. the time together. And then just like, just, you, you know, release it without like, oh, I wasted my time or, oh, I, you know, once again, it didn't work out. Like, don't even, even bring up any of that extra. That's where you start creating drama for yourself, yeah. but take the beauty of it and, and, uh, by the way, what we're talking about is a very ninja level approach to this ninja level. Okay. Well, I'm saying it's, it's a ninja level of awareness. Mm. You know, this is hard for a lot of people okay. that are still in that space of traditional expectations, uh, you know, and again, I'm still the biggest gigantic advocate for partnership. So yeah. I'm not here to trivialize that importance of that at the same time. There's no need in beating oneself up yeah. if it doesn't go the distance. Right. And, and we are, I'm going to say from a societal perspective, especially those of us at midlife, you know, there's a loneliness that occurs when your kids are launched mm. and, you know, and whatnot, and you feel like maybe the days in front of you are, are not as long as the days behind you. Yeah. So I can recognize that at the same time, that's where self-love really, it's this, this practice that yeah. you and I are gigantic advocates love because that to me is just as much a part of the journey as being mated with someone and experiencing life through another yeah. person's eyes too. Yeah. Well, that reminds me of a ninja, a ninja move or a ninja conversation I had okay. actually a couple of days ago. The gal that I was um, talking with, I did this. Have you heard of theta healing? Sure, sure. Okay, sure. so I, did, I mean, I'm not intimately yeah. familiar, but so I've heard I did of a it. session with her, and and she knows this. You know, part of what I why I'm doing sessions with her is like let's clear anything that I you know energetically that's here for um, that's holding me back from my calling in my soulmate, and and the conversation led to her asking me or saying like asking me who is your first soulmate. Mm. Oh, it's yourself. You wow, are. Wow, I need to soulmate. sit with that okay. for a second. Wow. 
Like that just hit me like a ton of bricks. Mm. Interesting. I never, ever, ever thought of that. Okay. And she went on to say, and it's so resonated with me, like everything she said, look at your card, everything you want to have with experience with this person first experience with yourself or make sure you're doing that and experiencing that with yourself. And she, the artist way, are you familiar with the book, the artist way? And, um, this gal, you do this journaling in the morning, but she's very big about you take yourself out on, I'm not going to get it right, but basically you have dates with yourself. Yes. Yes. Right? I'm so familiar. That, Ariel that Ford talks yeah. about that. So, so I'm, so you know, I was like secret. contemplating that and you know how even it sounds silly, but like last night so I was, Hugging hug. myself. Yeah. I was hugging myself and how I've been craving hugs so much lately. I'm like, oh my gosh. And just like closing my eyes and just feeling the squeeze. And I've taken myself out to dinner by myself. But again, if we, I see this for myself, the more I can be, love myself. And, and there's that inner me too, right there, yeah. whether you call it your higher self, your soul, your intuition, when I can be with her yeah. and be in bliss with her and like, this like this is amazing look at look at what we're experiencing at this cool restaurant or at the beach yeah. talk about if you're already in bliss like what what level is that attracting at so that's well from a law of attraction perspective you become more of a magnetic attractor for what you want so it's i, I always say if you're looking for a needle in the haystack bring out an electromagnet or become mm -hmm. an electromagnet in other words be mag magnetize that into your life yeah um i love that by the way ariel ford who wrote the book soulmate secret she when she called in her life partner she bought like she'd go to the movie theater and buy two tickets you know like so there'd be an empty seat but you know like she bought the ticket she put herself in that space some people yes. do vision boards yes know, and think of all the places they go i know some of this might feel cheesy for some people and yeah. some people might think it's ridiculous the idea is to just emotionally put your state self in a state of receptivity. Mm. That's what this is about. Yeah. Because sadly, when we when human beings have enough negative experiences, it oftentimes closes their heart. Mm. And I would say that both men and women in the current dating environment yeah. are rather wounded from past experiences and they have a closed heart. So okay. what you're describing everything you embody in your coaching and your life everything is about opening your heart up yes because yes. it's sadly i think too many people have walls up yeah and it's i those did walls. for many years yeah and, totally. and, and 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 again it's not on that's not it's a very common state the, to be yeah yeah so the idea is to open your heart. yeah and it goes back to that's part of the work do your work do yeah. your healing whatever that is okay. So um, we don't have to go through my profile. I feel like we've done, <laughs> so, uh, um, we've done a lot of good work, but if you want to give. Oh, uh, so she wants me to look at a uh, dating profile. Just a, you don't have to go, like, don't put me through the washer. I am not going to put you through the washer. So, <laughs> but if there's something um, that jumps But out, I do want to, something does jump out. Okay. Out. Okay. And okay. I want to share with you why I bring this up. Um, first off, I love all your photographs. Um, and most people have poor photographs. They're either poor quality photographs or they're just, um, there's lots of uh, shadows or their faces covered. All sunglasses. Sunglasses I've seen that. Yeah. or the sushi plate you ate that we really don't care yeah. about. So I love that they're all photographs of you. The only critique I have on the photographs is this isn't my favorite first photograph. Oh, interesting. I have a guy friend that loved that as my okay. first and photograph. And let me explain why. <laughs> okay. This is this or this one is my favorite because you're smiling with radiance in uh, this. This used to be my first one. Yeah. I have a so, pink sweater on. So Yeah, interesting. So, okay. I, I like that only because you're not, there isn't the same radiance. Got it. To capture me. Okay. Um. There's, I'm not saying there's sadness in this photograph because your eyes aren't speaking that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's your mouth. Okay. It's just a little passive there. Okay. Does that make sense? Totally. Your eyes are speaking, yeah, yeah. but your mouth isn't speaking. Whereas yeah. in this photograph or this photograph, your eyes and your mouth are speaking. I've got a smile going. Okay. Yeah. And, and honestly, the secret to a great smile yeah. is chuckling. It's chuckling. It's a oh. chuckle right now. 
<laughs> See, now, and I know, but that does is it captures your energy. Ah. The camera doesn't feel, most people struggle to ah. smile. Yeah. So the secret, I'm telling everyone, I learned this from a model. She ah. said the secret to a great smile is chuckling. It's chuckling. You know? Interesting. <laughs> because now it doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah. But the camera just takes an instantaneous right. shot. So it doesn't even notice that you Very feel Very interesting. I'll try so, that with my selfies next time. <laughs> so that's the only thing because this okay. captures me faster than this captures me. I, okay. As a, as a cinematic photograph, I get why your friend likes this. Okay? Yeah. But I'm saying you, you ideally right. that Pink would be. Pink sweater smiling. Um, I can easily swap that. And then I love what you wrote in your bio and you checked off all the boxes, I believe. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Whew. That's all right. Critique. That wasn't so bad. <laughs> I was, I was prepping her to tell her. I was oh my gosh, I was really nervous. And I and I I have really to your point. Yeah. To your point, I have been very mindful and intentional. Like I wrote this out, and I had some friends look at it. They gave me some feedback. Like they're like, "What's missing? Like, does this really capture your essence?" So I made some. I made a few little okay. tweaks and and everything. And I do feel. I do feel it really captures me. So yeah. um, I feel like I'm representing myself authentically as you can with eight you know seven so, slides in limited space so one thing we didn't talk about okay that we would almost need another episode okay so this is your profile the idea is to yes. to get someone to be interested in you and we don't like that as human beings we don't feel like we should have to do anything to make mm. someone interested in you but i just think of it like this if you wanted to get a job at the most prestigious company on the planet. You know, yeah. if you wanted to get a job, I'm saying we're self-employed, but if let's say we wanted, like we wanted Richard Branson as a client, then we're gonna put our best presentation out there. To, or if we wanted a job with Richard Branson, I'm just picking him out of any, on hundreds of people. Okay. You're gonna wanna put the best presentation of yourself out there. That's just, that's marketing 101. Mm -hmm. And it's the same in our love life. You okay. want to be seen by your ideal partner. So put the best presentation of yourself to be seen. Makes sense. And what we're not doing here is looking at the men's profiles. No, we're not. And maybe I can do another session yes. with you where I can teach you how to discern from the men's profiles. Okay. Because again, oftentimes we look at a photograph, we make maybe a judgment whether we'll swipe right or left. Okay. And then let's say we're about to swipe right, but then we read it and then we see something, a misalignment. Yes. You know, then, then we get oftentimes caught in that trap. Well, he's really handsome, or he's really this, or God, thank God he's six foot one, you know, whatever it is. You <laughs> he's know. got the green eyes I yeah, want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's also reading the body of it and say, is there a true alignment between the okay. two of us? Okay. Um, so those I, are just some things to think about. No, I like that because I think I've almost gone the other way where I'm, to your point, if I see now they're Catholic, I'm, unless there's other stuff that's there, I'm, like and I and I grew up Catholic, but yeah. if they're not, if I'm not seeing spiritual, I've done a lot of left swipe. It's a really tricky space because I uh, vacillate between this two because I okay. hold space that a person can meet me. But you're right; are they in that same bandwidth? Right. And ideally, they would have checked that same box, right? Too, you know. Okay. Um, and politics can be a real tricky one for some people who lean incredibly right or incredibly incredibly left yeah um that can be a sense of contention i mean there's yeah. all these little variables yeah um ultimately and i know you talked about this in the most recent video you did and, and by the way i love following your journey Aww. i'm excited to be on this train with you, you to follow Thank how you. it goes um Ugh. i believe also that we can almost look at someone's profile and feel an intuition i i really believe that Mm -hmm. Um, I, I believe when a person is really aligned to who they are, what they want, they know themselves. I believe even a dating profile represents energy. Mm, I'm with you on that. And, and I, 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 I know I mentioned that. the energy of the photograph, you know, as a differentiation, yeah. but I'm, I'm talking about, it gives me an insight into where their, their awareness is. Mm. So when someone puts together a poor profile, it tells me they're just not as aware of themselves. Okay. That they, you know, like it tells me, like, like your profile tells me you're pretty aware. Yeah. Like I can feel that from your profile. Mm -hmm. And I think you can look at other people's profiles and, and really discern the same thing. Yeah. I think our next evolution of human experience is really getting fine-tuned 
to reading energy and connecting in that space. Mm -hmm. um, and if you ask anybody who's in a pretty healthy, happy relationship, you know, they almost all say the same thing. When we met, we felt a sense of knowing. Mm. There was a sense of energy. There was like, you know, there was this, you know, there was something beyond the surface. Yeah. In other words, it's like, it's almost yeah. divine. You can, not... Yes, I, you, right. You can't, you can't necessarily name it. Exactly. It is, that it, was it is it, an energy thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. So this has been amazing. Yes. How about any, oops, as I'm spitting on your table here, <laughs> any, um, mm, uh, we could go on forever, and um, I'm excited uh, for another conversation. But for this conversation, yep. any final Jonathan wisdom? Oh my uh, God. No, no pressure. It could be something stupid and silly. I don't know. <laughs> Closing comments on how? Okay, you know, set yourself up for sex success with midlife. Did you say sex? <laughs> <laughs> Might have been a little slip there. <laughs> that's, <okay. laughs> that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> we, that's another conversation for sure. When to have physical intimacy. Uh, what would be my, my, so I've been on a big kick of, of the idea of know thyself. Mm. And, and part of knowing thyself is really getting clarity on the type of relationship you want. And what you've just illustrates is you've got you went through your list, you've kind of really identified what you're looking for in a relationship. And so my invitation for everybody is to really ask themselves a question. What does a relationship look like for me? Okay. What does commitment look like for me? What does commitment mean to me? Like spend time uh... exploring that, not in the nebulous, you know, in the clouds, but really granular like what you did. Okay. And embody that and feel into it. Yeah. And, and I say this because oftentimes women don't actually do this. Men don't do it at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm, I'm inviting everyone, both your male and female audience, to really get a sense if you do want a committed relationship, then get really clear on what that looks like for you. I love that. Because if, if we don't have the clarity, then it's like we're, we're just that sail, the sail in the yeah. breeze just moving here and there. Yeah. Which, which, I'm going to go backwards for a second. The and you were talking about the um, Ariel Ford and what she talks about, and again the vision. Yeah. One of the things I heard, and I'm curious if you do this for yourself, is um, like acting as if that partner is already here. So it could be. It doesn't have to be setting to place settings, but it's an energetic thing where you're. I'm laughing because I have something to share with you. Okay, <laughs> like, and I do this sometimes. Like I. I don't, because some people, a, a lot of people get stuck in, they're not here and they're in that lack energy. Yeah. But I am in, like when I read my card, I, I feel, I feel them here, here in the now. And I just go about my day as if they're my day. Yeah. I'm not talking to them necessarily, but I'm there. There's nothing that comes in for the most part that's, oh, I don't have. Yeah. It's like I, I, all around me. And again, this is maybe a little ninja, but all around me, I'm like feeling that I can tap into the energy of them with me. Yeah. So I shared this earlier. <laughs> uh, so um, I actually walk the beach every day. I do about a four or five mile walk, uh, about an hour, hour and a half. And I, and I put on, you know, meditation type music. And I literally, I, I daydream about what it looks like to connect with this person. Ooh. And I even, uh, and it's a fun little thing for me to do. And it's like, um, we connect on a dating site and how we interacted with each other at first and how the telephone, first telephone call goes. And I play this little daydream for myself and I take it down different nooks and crannies. Okay. And I do this for about an hour, mm -hmm. close to it. No, maybe it's about a half hour. And it, it, and And the ideas, and I also, imagine what it feels like. I shared this earlier. Yeah, I imagine yeah, what yeah. it feels like. And to the extent that I have an expectation that's going to look like this, I have no attachment that looks this way. It's just putting me in an energetic state of abundance, an energetic state of receiving, an energetic state of joy. And, and I have conversations, like I'm having the okay. conversation, <laughs> like our first telephone call, like what happens? And it's just a fun little game I play for myself. Mm, I love it. And and, you know, and it'll be interesting. Like I do also every once in a while I go, you know what? There's a really good chance it's going to exact and 
exa happen exactly like this, like a Joe Dispenza. I, I've kind heard of people thing. have that experience. Like, so, totally. so you know what? I'd rather think big. Yeah. Than yeah. Than think small. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I'm I invite everybody that. to do that. Think big. Have that big vision for the person and yeah. and be in the energy. So that's yeah. that's a big big reminder takeaway for me is yeah. being the energy. So Jonathan. Oh, thank you. No, this thank has you. been amazing. This has been fun. Can I have a hug? Of course you can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. More to come. All right. Thanks for this. My pleasure. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and that you've already walked away with some nuggets that you can apply to your own dating, mating, and relating journey. Uh, stay tuned for more. Again, lots of nuggets to, to bring back to you. So that's it. That's it for the episode today. And as far as what's coming up, let me tell you, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> but one thing I do know is I am absolutely on the right track. And I invite you to keep staying on this train with me as we both journey toward our own true love and we continue to learn things about ourselves and grow and evolve and have fun along the way. So more to come uh, in this next episode, but you will be as surprised as I will as things unfold for me this next week. Okay, so in closing, I wanna thank you again for being here for this episode and for being on this journey with me, for giving me your feedback, if you're not yet subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now and also sign up for notifications. That way you will be first in line when the next premiere is scheduled. But until we meet again, I wish you nothing but grace and ease on your own beautiful journey of finding your true love. Mm -hmm.